I came across a way of making this cool folding thing uh, back in 2000 and oh back in the 1980s um, I was perusing patents in the patent office in Manhattan and I saw this and I thought it was pretty remarkable so uh, I made a copy of the patent and here it is um, there's pages long and some nice pictures uh, Iris Sarid is the name on the patent so I discovered it in the 1980s sometime in the 19 I think 90s um, I did it with a bunch of kids in 2016 uh, I wrote about it on my blog and a couple of days ago uh, somebody asked me a question about it so I'm doing this little video answer the question. This is the one that's on my blog from 2016 and I bet this, I wouldn't be surprised if this piece was 20 years old. Uh, and it does all sorts of things which may be difficult to see on camera, certainly difficult to do on camera. <laughs> uh, and so actually what I did is I made some photographs of it in different configurations. So the question that I had, that I got, was how did the pieces go together? And I'm going to try to, it's not a simple answer because there's many ways. It's sort of like, it depends. And I'm going to answer that. Um, so the first thing I want to show is just the basic piece. The basic piece is uh, a squ four squares, four squares that, uh, let's see, I think there's one more here, yep, four squares that are connected together. Now how do they connect together? And I, I do want to talk a little bit about the four squares. Now um, this is uh, some astrobrite paper, here it is. Um, I got this at Target, 50 sheets, uh, and has five colors, so one more than you need. And it's a, it's, it's a little bit of a heavy weight. It's 176 GSM, 65 pound, so it's cardstock, okay? You need a heavy-ish kind of paper for this because there's a lot of folding. So the simplest way to do this would just be make eight and a half inch squares. And there's my eight and a half inches. So, if you have, you certainly don't have to use, you certainly don't have to score the lines. It does make the lines neater. And I don't need to, uh, I probably don't need to convince a lot of people that sometimes you get cracks in your paper if you don't score them first. And looking here for my scoring tool. There were so many tools to get together for this, I knew I'd forget something. So, I don't have my scoring tool, but so I'm going to use something else. I'm going to use a paper clip. So this is eight and a half. That means I have to make, I'm, I'm going to be making the four, the four lines of symmetry on this square. So the four lines of symmetry are up and down, and Let's see, wait, I think I can do better than a paper clip. There it goes. I'm going to use my phone folder. Four and a, so up and, up and down, and then I turn it, and it's up and down again. So you've got the horizontal and the vertical. Because this is eight and a half inches, I know through the Pythagorean theorem that if I put this on the number at six and make a touch right over here, so this is six inches across, and come down, that I should be in pretty good shape. There it goes right through the center and right through the center again. Now I'm hoping that you would know how to fold a square in half if you don't, it, it, along the lines of symmetry, if you don't have a scoring tool. But like I said, a scoring tool is, a scoring table here is really nice uh, because it makes the folds crisper. And if you notice what I'm doing here, 
is I'm making the fold, then I'm reversing it. Because in this toy, the folds will go both ways. So everything is made and reversed. And there's one more. Of this for now. Now, the simplest way, if you're working, this is I'm doing this, the thought of working with children in a classroom. Uh, and if you're a bookbinder and you're looking at this, uh, you know how to hinge things together. You can do it with cloth or with paper. And in fact, this one that I made, because it's sort of like nice. I use paper hinges, so there's a hinges between each of these, a black strip. Here, I left this open so you can maybe see a strip of black paper that's an inch and a half wide that has a score line in it, and I attached the, the papers together with that. But you wouldn't do that with kids because it's way too cumbersome. So here's how I would do this with children and uh, the reason I feel confident in doing this is because like I said this one here maybe 20 years old this I did with kids and I did it with tape these colored tapes here uh, and then to finish it off I used scotch tape on this edge and it's still there 20 years later so um, I think that it's just fine to use and actually, I'm going to show you that this yeah, it's usually starts off, the, this, the most uh, compact way to do it is everything's in half, and there it goes in half again, and see how small it goes. Okay, so, uh, yeah, bookbinders are going to cringe when I use tape, but listen, not everybody can do it the fancy way. So, I'm taking a piece of good good tape. This is my Scotch Magic Tape. And trying to make it behave. Now, this is not paper beneath it, so this tape is not going to really uh, stick to the surface beneath if it happens to touch it, although I'm going to try to be careful not to. Um, I thought my tape was long enough. It wasn't. So I'm going to do a little bit more. I'm not going to use that piece. So you see, I'm not taping it yet to the yellow piece. It's just hanging off the edge. I'm going to turn it over. Put my yellow on there. Line it up nicely. And take my tape and press it down. Okay, now I'm not finished. Because I did it on one side, I want to put it on the other side as well. Okay. With the paper hinge, I did not put it on both sides. I just did it on one. And there it goes. Now, if you're working with kids to make this, or just do it on your own, uh, you would want to decorate all of these sections before you did the final taping together. Uh, because let's see why oh yeah because it's really hard to get inside and decorate if those pages are um, not decorated before you tape them because remember this will then fold like so and you, you it's just really hard it doesn't turn inside out again so what's ever inside is going to stay inside for the most part okay but th these would just you would do the same thing Put the tape on one side, put the tape on one side, lay it down, roll the tape over, open it up, and you'll be able to see inside there to get the tape on the inside. Okay, so that's one way. Now, another way, and this is kind of just, this requires a little bit of advanced planning. I'm going to get this out again. And what I've got here is the same thing. 
These are squares that have that same fold in them, right? But they've got this tab on them. And this is if you want to do some gluing, but not too much gluing. You have to think in advance though. So this is eight and a half this way, but it's only eight this way because I have an extra half inch for the tab. So what I would do here is there's my eight and a half. Um, and then here's, let's see, how would I do it? Um, paper that's this size generally has the grain this way. So you want to do the fold that is parallel to the grain. So I'm going to put this here. I'm going to just make a half inch score line. This is going to be my tab. And then cut it eight inches this way. Because now when I fold over the tab, I now have my eight inch square and I will put those fold lines in according to the the, eight, the four symmetries of the square. Okay, so I've done that already with this one. And so what I would do here is, let's see, there's my tab. And I'm going to take this and put it next to the tab. Bring it down a little bit. I need I need some scrap paper. I think I'll put scrap paper here and scrap paper here. And make sure everything is nicely lined up. I'll probably check again before I do the folding over. So I've got the scrap paper. Here's, here's my top piece. This is the bottom this part. This little tab is on the bottom. And okay. I've got some white glue. This is PVA. Uh, you can use you can use uh, Yes Glue or Aileen's or something. Some people ask about Elmer's all-purpose glue. It's kind of nice, except from what I understand, it gets brittle with age. So I don't know. You can use a craft glue. Good. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention and that I forgot to do is these little corners need to be snipped on the tab. You have to move this away now. But these need to be snipped so they're at a 45 or more degree angle. There we go. You see how they're snipped? Top and bottom because of this fold. And I just press it over. There we go. Um, and that, and, and then the, again, the same thing. I don't want to, I don't want to uh, glue this down yet because it's not decorated. But I would do the same thing. I just put the, the, uh, make sure that I cut my angles, and then fold. Put the glue on with the scrap paper around. Fold it over, and that's that. Okay, and then you'll have it. So I think that's all. Uh, I need to say about this and I was glad to get that question and I was glad to make this and uh, and have something to do with all my scraps this is such a fun thing so if you have any questions uh, ask away but I think I think uh, you should just send me pictures of what you do